I don't like when I sign up for somebody's email list and like I just get bombarded by emails. Do I risk if I don't deliver the thing that they expect? People are wondering, where's the newsletter? I signed up for a newsletter. Can we grow for free, essentially? <laughs> Caitlin Burgoyne, a renowned entrepreneur and marketing expert, is the founder of Customer Camp and has worked with Fortune 100 clients, been featured in major media outlets like Forbes, and grown a newsletter with over 63,000 subscribers. Now she's seeking expert advice to take her creator business to the next level. This is part one of a series where you'll get an exclusive inside look at Caitlin's coaching session with Kyle Adams. Kyle is a creator growth manager here at ConvertKit, soon to be Kit, who has worked with some of the largest newsletter creators to help them turn casual readers into super fans. In this session, Kyle provides Caitlin with coaching and actionable insights to elevate her business. I highly recommend you closing your other tabs, eliminating distractions, and having something to take notes with because we're about to go deep. Before we dive into how Caitlin plans to dramatically increase the growth of her newsletter, we need to understand her objectives. I guess we should start with what are you wanting to solve specifically? That's a good question. My specific goal is can we start investing in paid growth for the newsletter something we've done very very little of we kind of dipped our toes for a second and then actually be able to have such a valuable um, onboarding and welcome experience that people get excited about what we can offer they understand the problems we solve they opt in to purchasing any of our like kind of on-demand products or they are so excited about it that when we ask them to refer a friend, they actually do. So my goal is to basically break even on our ad spend by selling some of these smaller kind of digital products we have up front, um, allowing us to scale paid growth. And then we're working on a few new things that they would be primed and ready for. So yeah, can we grow for free essentially? <laughs> You already have a few products out there, which is great. Just kind of leading people into that. A lot more personalization, it sounds like, is what we're going to be building in into the entire flow. Yes. We've historically done a terrible job of even letting people know that these products exist. And we don't really drive anybody to our website. So the reason being is that the website um, wasn't built to be Why We Buy's website. It was built as my consulting website and Why We Buy was just something I slapped on. We're building a new Why We Buy website. We need to start actually getting people there and promoting our stuff. Caitlin has several objectives she wants to achieve, and a key strategy she's using is called the creator flywheel. The flywheel is a strategy used by many creators to rapidly grow their audience. Sahil Bloom, for instance, grew his email audience from 150,000 to over 600,000 this year. Here's a quick overview of how it works. One, attract new subscribers to your newsletter through both paid and organic social media. Two, send those people emails, which three, earns you revenue. Four, then reinvest those earnings into social ads and partner networks. Every time this cycle is completed, even more users join the newsletter, meaning every step scales even further. In just a second, we'll dive into how Caitlin plans to bring her flywheel to life. But let me be upfront, Caitlin's plan is incredibly well organized, but when you first see it, you're gonna be thinking, Wow, that's a lot. If it feels overwhelming, don't worry. After Caitlin explains everything, we'll break it down so you can easily understand what's happening. I know you've done some work on just this kind of ideal flow of where things could go. And I'd love to see more about that. Let me see here. Okay, I'm gonna show you this one first. So when I thought about what the user flow was, I took inspiration from Nathan's post and the convert kit posts on flywheels and thinking about what is the recurring sequence that we want people to go through. So it starts with like attracting, um, in our case, new subscribers, capturing those subscribers, getting them to sign up for the newsletter engaging them and then in my mind the next step for us is really delighting them so that when we ask for a uh, when we have a call to action they are likely to do it and then all those that convert the money that we make on paid things will flow back up into more paid traffic and hopefully referrals so i'll walk you through do you want to see it kind of like quick way through yeah it'd be great to kind of just see the flow i see a lot of 
I see a lot of things flowing, but I also know we're doing a lot of personalization. So mm -hmm. understandable that there's a lot of arrows going places, but uh, it'd be good to kind of like connect the dots a little bit. So there's two entry points for us attracting new subscribers. So we're going to be running meta ads, uh, specifically promoting the newsletter itself. And we're also going to be using Sparkloop's paid partner recommendations and love that that is already part of ConvertKit because that makes it so easy. Um, so we're going to be getting new subscribers through those two channels. Now, of course, people who come in through Sparkloop, they won't see our opt-in page. They won't see a thank you page from us because they're coming in through Sparkloop. So we want to create a bit of a custom welcome experience for them uh, to make sure that the folks who do come in through that, they realize they've signed up for the newsletter. We do um, we can make it clear how they got there, get them excited about the newsletter. The folks that come in through Meta, um, we're designing a new opt-in page for cold traffic because currently almost all of our subscribers come through my organic social. And so they already know me by the time they get to the opt-in page and they don't necessarily need a ton of convincing. Our page converts really well already. I think I was just writing a newsletter about this. I think it's 79% conversion right now, wow. which is good. Um, but of course, those folks are already coming from my social. By the time they click a link to visit the, the newsletter, they're probably already committed to signing up. I anticipate that the cold traffic people who don't know me are going to need a bit more convincing. So we're working on a new opt-in page. Then there'll be a thank you page where we're going to tease that there's going to be a uh, surprise welcome gift. And one of the things that we cover in an issue of why we buy is something called uh, surprising motivation. So this idea that people are sometimes more motivated to take an action when you offer them a surprise reward than when they know what the reward is. So rather than saying, we're going to give you this, I'm going to say, we're going to give you a surprise. So then everybody who comes in through Meta will get a welcome email where they will be asked to complete a poll. And in that poll, we're going to ask them, what is your number one goal right now? And we're going to use ConvertKit's polling feature, which will allow us to segment people based on their answers. Um, and the question we're going to ask is, you know, what's your goal right now? And the we're going to give them two options, either identifying their best fit buyers, something that lots of folks come to why we buy interested to do or boosting conversions. Another thing that lots of folks want to do. So the reason we picked these two goals is they align with two products that we already have. And it made for a, a simpler kind of branched journey. Had we added a third one, then we'd have to have a whole third sequence of emails. And that seemed like a lot to start off. So we started with two. Anybody who doesn't complete the poll, we're automatically going to add them to the boosting conversions track. So they'll get this email. Once they complete that poll, we can then send them to a thank you page. And on that thank you page, again, we're going to say we've got a custom freebie coming your way tomorrow. In the meantime, we'd love to learn more about you so we can customize our content for you. And we're going to use right message, which is a tool that integrates with ConvertKit to ask them more questions, which will then later allow us to use conditional content in our emails that speak to the type of user that they are. At the end of our emails, when we introduce our products, instead of just saying something that's kind of generic that would speak to everyone, we could be more specific around, you know, as a freelance marketer or as a entrepreneur. So we can be a bit more specific in our call to action messages at the end of our email. So we're going to try that out. It's something new to that we're doing this time. Then we will tag them. And so people who say best fit buyers, they get tagged. People who say boosting conversions, they get tagged. And then they're going to get basically three additional emails, two that are kind of really high value emails speaking to the goal that they have. And a fourth one where we're going to ask them to refer a friend to why we buy. And we're going to introduce an interesting concept. I'll, I'll get to that one in a second, but basically second email, um, we will send them a freebie we've designed called the best fit buyer scorecard, which is this cool exercise where you basically identify who you think your best fit customers could be. And then you can rank and score them on these different dimensions. And at the end, it automatically calculates who has the highest score and that might be the best fit for you to target. So it's a fun exercise. People who are looking to identify their best fit buyers, it's a quick way to kind of think about some of these key questions that matter when you're trying to figure out who your best buyers are. And in that, we will kind of soft sell our clarity call cheat sheets because knowing who you target important, 
Even more important than that, knowing why those people buy. And one of the best ways to get that information is by doing interviews with real buyers. So we've got an asset called our Clarity Call Cheat Sheets, where we teach my interview method. So that's gonna be kind of a soft sell of that product, not aggressive at all. Then people on that track will get a third email about what I call the big question, which is you know understanding why your customers really buy. This email will introduce this short webinar that I did, it's about 15 minutes. And in it, I explain the concept of jobs to be done and the fact that people don't just buy products and services because of who they are, which is way, the way that most people tend to categorize buyers based on kind of their demographics or psychographics or firmographics. But instead we reveal this other way of thinking about demand, which is understanding the job customers are trying to get done. So in that webinar, I teach that concept, game changing concept for me. It was one of the things that actually like change how I build my business. Um, so I'll reveal that in that, that webinar again, just free value for them. And at the end of that webinar, again, I remind them, if you really want to understand the jobs your customers are trying to get done, you should like interview them. And it's a good opportunity to promote the Clarity Call Cheat Sheets. So final email, they get what is from their perception are just regular uh, newsletter. It will come in on a Tuesday. I love that I can set it up with ConvertKit to only send on Tuesdays, the same day that we'd normally send our newsletter. And we'll do an issue on what's called reciprocity decay, which is this idea that lots of people have heard of the term reciprocity. Oftentimes people are more likely to do something nice for you if you do something nice for them first, they wanna return the favor. So we'll teach them about that concept, really valuable concept for marketers. But at the end, we'll say, Hey, like if you've enjoyed this free value that we gave you, not just not in these specific words, but would you recommend a friend to to who you think would like reading why we buy? And then I will again be including a Sparkloop referral program and we'll be having a few rewards in that program that are based on their answers going to probably be relevant to them. So that fourth one is again kind of a value email relevant to them feels just like our standard newsletter it's really priming them to be ready for the value they'll get in the newsletter and my hope is that some people will refer a friend which will then get us more organic subscribers for free um, and then some people based on the call to actions in these other emails will potentially buy our on-demand products they've been introduced to them they understand the why behind them and though the money from those products will go back up into more paid growth so this is the kind of like sequence that we've built out to date. That's amazing. Yeah. So then this all kind of the flywheel portion of this, which is great, is that all of this funnels back to the top and then people start cascading back through. Here's a breakdown of Caitlin's strategy into core components so you can design your own flywheel more easily. First up, attracting new subscribers. Caitlin uses two primary channels for this. First, there is meta ads. These attract cold traffic, so Caitlin designs a new opt-in page specifically to introduce herself better to subscribers who may not be familiar with her yet. And secondly, Sparkloop's paid partner recommendations. For these subscribers, Caitlin is creating a custom welcome experience. Unlike a generic opt-in flow, these new subscribers won't see the usual opt-in and thank you pages. Instead, they'll be welcomed with something more personalized. Once subscribers are in, the next crucial step is engaging with emails. Caitlin's approach stands out with these strategies. One, poll for segmentation. Right from the welcome email, Caitlin asks subscribers about their primary goal to help better segment them for the next step, which is two, personalized content. Leveraging ConvertKit's polling feature and write message, Caitlin ensures every subsequent email is aligned with each subscriber's specific interests, setting the stage for the next strategy, three, surprise motivation. To keep the momentum going, she hints at a surprise welcome gift on the thank you page, adding an element of delight, which encourages is even more interaction. With the users engaged, they're even more likely to make a purchase and earn Caitlin revenue. She achieves this through a few methods. First is soft product introductions. Each segmented email sequence includes subtle mentions of her products like the Clarity Call Cheat Sheets tailored to the subscriber's goal. Secondly, she has the Webinar for Value Edition. One email offers a short webinar on the jobs to be done concept, providing value while gently promoting related products. Finally, to keep the momentum going, Caitlin plans to reinvest to grow the newsletter by one, 
using a referral program. In the first email of the sequence, she invites subscribers to refer friends to the newsletter, but it's not just a basic referral request. She ties it in with valuable content and offers rewards through this Sparkloop referral program. And two, revenue reinvestment. The revenue generated from product sales is then reinvested into more paid growth strategies like social ads, ensuring that the flywheel keeps spinning. Now that we understand the plan behind Caitlin's flywheel, it's important to remember Mike Tyson's famous words, everyone has a plan until they get punched in the mouth. This next section is our highlights from where Kyle and Caitlin dive deep into what can go wrong and discuss tactics that can help improve this flywheel. What led you to the point of sending those who don't respond to the poll to wallet opening words as opposed to anything else? So the reason that we did that is because that product just sells better than Clarity Call Cheat Sheets. As much as I would love for every marketer and entrepreneur to interview their customers, a lot of folks won't do it. They won't do it because it takes more time. They won't do it because they're nervous. Whereas lots of folks are interested in boosting conversion and understanding the science backed um, wording that they can use in their copy to boost conversions. So I just figured if somebody doesn't complete the poll, I'd rather promote the product that sells better, that I think that has a higher probability of being bought. This goes a little bit outside the flywheel, but it's worth mentioning. If somebody goes into the wallet opening words flow as an example, will they ever be pitched your other products? Like now that they've gone on that track, I assume you would still want to make sure at some point they see the rest of your, your offering. Yes, and this is one of the things that I'm so excited to do with ConvertKit that we've never done. So in the reciprocity decay issue, typically we have sponsors in our newsletter. That's how we monetize the newsletter. A lot of, about half of our revenue comes from sponsorships. The other half comes from the sale of this program I have called Unignorable, and then we sell these on-demand products. The on-demand products are kind of our third revenue stream. And so typically what we do in the newsletter is we have a couple ad placements in each issue. So in this fourth email, we'll actually be promoting our own products in those ad placements, which we would normally have sponsors in those places. And then at the end of our normal weekly newsletter, which changes every week, we have a section where we will promote, we'll say, you know, when you're ready, here are some of our tools that might be helpful to you. But what we're gonna be able to do now that we are tagging them and we know what their goals are, is we'll be still able to introduce both the Clarity Call Cheat Sheets and Wallet Opening Words as we currently do. But we can kind of have more specific language or we could say like you know i know you're looking to boost conversions well you should check out you know these 26 and a half science backed reasons i think the ability to personalize those those ps messages based on their poll answers and their answers to write message to me that's pretty exciting that kind of gives a longer tail on the entire flywheel as well like it could kind of come back around later even potentially than just at the end of the flywheel and that's a great point because one thing that i like fundamentally believe is that people don't buy things because they're in your funnel people buy things because something happens in their life that motivates them to have to do this thing now and we call it the trigger event in the work that we do and so some folks are obviously going to go through this and go that's cool thanks caitlin for the freebies that was some interesting information but i don't have time to talk to customers right now or i'm not working on a big marketing asset that i need to like have converting so we're delivering a lot of value and my hope is building a lot of trust and affinity with the audience and then as we continue to deliver value through our weekly newsletter eventually something's gonna happen in their world where it is the right time and then they'll know about these products they'll have been primed they'll understand their value and they'll be more likely to come back for them i also want to call out that it's really smart you are looking at people who don't come through organic different, especially in recommendations. I've noticed a lot of times people kind of view recommendations as just another source of subscribers. And they really are just so different. Being more cold to what you're about, what you offer. They've seen maybe one sentence about you and that's all. <laughs> so it's great that you're, you're kind of, I wanted to call that out, that you're kind of treating that a little bit different. That's good to see. Well, I think it's from your advice because we certainly weren't before. <laughs> Initially, when we started doing um, Upscribe, we were lucky we got early beta access to it and then started doing paid recommendations. We weren't treating those folks differently. And then eventually we do have a, a different custom welcome email for them. So they get a email where it's like, hey, you're in. 
in, but like, did you mean to get in? Like, here's how you might have got on the list. So just making sure that they know, making it really easy for them to unsubscribe if they want to. And another thing we worked on with you, which is like a game changer, is setting up a engagement sequence so that we can actually track people that are coming in from the Spark Loop Partner Program and tracking their level of engagement so that we're only paying for ones who are engaged because we didn't have the right uh, engagement screening sequence set up the first time we ran with this and I think that lots of folks you know they don't realize necessarily that they're opting into a newsletter and so they didn't come for our newsletter and to your point if we're not being really careful to make sure that we're identifying the ones that are interested hoping to like introduce ourselves get them more interested and then getting rid of the cold ones fast so we don't pay for them um, so Thank you for bringing that to our attention because I don't think we were doing that in the beginning. It's a new thing in this space. You know, having recommended subscribers wasn't a thing a few years ago. And it's just different because most of the time, historically, in an email list, people have seen something about you. They've seen your website. They've seen social. They've seen something. And they feel compelled to sign up because they've seen what you're about. But now we're on this other side of it where they haven't really seen what you're about. They see a little a mention of what they could expect potentially. And then they're sort of coming in wondering what's going on with more curiosity than anticipation, I guess I would say. Normally they'd be anticipating something. And in this case, they're just curious what's happening. So from your perspective, I see we're going through basically three emails per pathway. Is that right? Yeah. So they get the initial one where they're, you know, we tease the surprise gift, but we ask them the polling question. And then there are two value emails that are kind of separate from what our typical newsletter format is where the goal is to deliver value for them um, based on the goal that they've identified. And then the fourth email they get will, in their mind, it's just the newsletter. It comes on a Tuesday. It looks exactly like the newsletter. And then you're going to start getting our regular newsletter. So before it was just three, I've added in an extra one that is now this uh, version of the newsletter that's a little bit different based on what you're seeing with other folks that have newsletters. I'm a little worried like if they signed up with the newsletter in mind like what why we buy is all about like do you do you ever see people avoiding a welcome sequence just going straight to the new like to their standard style of newsletter i guess my first question would be how long do you anticipate the gap is between these emails the first three i was thinking i'd love your opinion on this so uh, initially what we used to do is we'd get the they get the welcome one where we'd say hey like we're, i'm going to be sending you a special thing in 30 minutes but to make sure that you get it you got to do these things framing it again is like this is value for you but i want to make sure it lands in your inbox so do these things then they would get the free thing 30 minutes later so this is in day one then i'd say hey i'm going to send you a special one-off email tomorrow it's answering this question so that would be within you know three emails in two days and then they just get the normal newsletter so if they signed up on a saturday then they you know get the third email on sunday and then the fault like that coming tuesday they'd just be added to our normal list and start getting the newsletter i think that the way polls work you need at least a day between when you ask the poll question and when you take them to the next stage based on their answers so i was thinking it would be three days one email per day and then again email four just comes on the first tuesday i don't think that's extending it too long i think because i've seen some people who put the gaps longer so it's maybe it takes a week or two weeks to get through a welcome and in that case of course people are wondering where's the newsletter i signed up for a newsletter what is this but i think if you're just taking them through a couple of days and for most people, that's going to feel like, oh, I'm getting this before I start getting the newsletter because I signed up on Thursday or whatever, and I don't get it until Tuesday. For them, it'll feel like they're just going through that. I do think we have to account for the people who sign up on a Tuesday. By the time this is done, it'll be maybe Wednesday or something. But also there's the, the case of somebody landing on email three on a Tuesday, for example. So then it's going to be the following Tuesday. So there's a, a week gap mm -hmm. in there. I don't know that that's necessarily a bad thing, but I do think it's just important in that third email to set the tone of, by the way, you'll get the first uh, edition of the newsletter on next Tuesday. That could be the one, it could be tomorrow <laughs> uh, based on when they get it. Do you think that an email a day for four days with the fourth one being what from their perception is the newsletter? is too aggressive. Like I don't like when I sign up for somebody's email list and like I just get bombarded by emails. Like it just makes like it's like you know everyone's busy. Like so do you think that we should set it so that let's say if they sign up on a Saturday, they get their free gift on a Sunday, they get their kind of like one-off 
value email on a Monday, and then typically they would get the newsletter on Tuesday. Do you think we should delay that newsletter so they don't get it until the next week or still just send it on that Tuesday? What do you think? Do you think four in a row is too aggressive? Normally, I'd say if they're an organic subscriber coming in and they know something about you and they've seen you and they sign up, getting four emails, like four days worth of emails, they should be ecstatic that they're hearing from you because they should be very interested. <laughs> and so I would say that they're kind of self-selecting if they decide to leave. Uh, it probably just means they weren't going to purchase or they weren't going to do something. In the case of these subscribers, I do think maybe delaying that for the next week would make sense. And we can set that up even in an automation where it's just basically we delay them by a certain time frame afterwards mm -hmm. just to ensure mm -hmm. it's not specifically the next day or something that they get an email. So if you want to give the spacing of, let's just say three days as an example. Uh, so at the very end of the automation, we can say, wait three days before they end the automation or before they get the first newsletter, essentially. Uh, that way it gives that gap no matter what. And if that happens to land on a Tuesday, fantastic. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. And if not, then it'll just wait till the next Tuesday to send yeah, it. Yeah, I like that idea. I think giving them some breathing room is good uh, in the case of how they've come in and just knowing that context. That was a lot of information. Your brain is probably buzzing with a ton of ideas. Your notepad is likely packed with notes. So the next question is now what? How do we actually build a flywheel like this in ConvertKit? Well, we will show you exactly how Caitlin built this in episode two, which you can subscribe here to stay in the loop. Or if it's already out, you can go watch it right now. If it's not out, in the meantime, you can go check out Jay Klaus's flywheel, which helped him 7X his newsletter for even more inspiration. We'll see you there or there.